Julian Assange, keep the pressure on. Free Julian Assange, as you know, as we all say, like all the time, every week. Bam. First off, our friend Gordon Dimmack. We all know Gordon Dimmack. Dimmack. All right. So, Gordon. The return of Dimmack. Right. Uh, where's that on the board? <laughs> so, Gordon is one of the, you know, longtime supporters and staunch advocates for the freedom and, and release of Julian Assange. Um, he's been, you know, screaming for his freedom for a long time. And he wrote a new article saying when all is exposed, 98% of Washington will fall. It had that title, which is, of course, a quote of Julian's. Okay. Yep. For any citizen of the U.S. of A. reading this article, I want to make one thing clear. None of what I'm about to say applies to you, to all of our American brothers and sisters. Americans have treated Gordon absolutely fine throughout his entire life. In fact, when he was spending time across the pond years ago, family he was staying with needed help. He watched as ordinary Americans rallied around to help their family, neighbor, and friend. Americans, in his experience, are good, honest, caring people. And many friends in America, and no doubt some of them will read this. I heartily, certainly hope so. Well, guess what, Gordon? One of them's reading right now. The people yep. I'm addressing this article to are those in power in the U.S. who Julian Assange would say are those regrettable elements in it that hate truth, liberty, and justice. This article is directed toward you, Joe Biden, Anthony Blinken, and many, many others in the administration and the simps that cover for them, as well as plenty in the Republican Party, I'm sure, that don't that aren't on board with this shit. Everybody hates you, America. Everybody. Absolutely every country on the planet hates you. Not just those who are your presumed enemies in Russia and China, or those who are th those countries in the Middle East, Africa and South America, who you've been sanctioning and bombing into submission in order to steal their resources for decades while assassinating any person in other sovereign nations or at home uh, who was a threat to your hegemony over this planet. Hegemony. Not just those countries, but all of your allies hate you too. The French hate you, America. They really do. The French fucking hate your guts. So do the Germans, the Italians, and the Dutch. The rest of Europe hate you too, especially <laughs> those who knew you blew up Nord Stream and are responsible for the deindustrialization of their continent. The British hate you for sure. Even my mom hates you, and she's the loveliest 80-year-old you could ever meet without a bad bone in her body. I'm not going to do this in Gordon's accent. I bet. I'm sure she's a wonderful woman, Gordon. You haven't seen her at the pub yet, Gordon. Everybody you know? hates you, America, <laughs> including your allies. In fact, you don't really have any allies at all. <sighs> the whole Epstein-Maxwell trafficking children to nobody saga, where none of their rich and powerful clients were even named in public, let alone prosecuted, in an obvious honey trap blackmail operation run by U.S. and Israeli intelligence services, exposed this truth to the world. Yeah. You don't have allies. Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. He knew. He knew. <laughs> he was there. Jesus well, was everywhere. Well, Jesus is your co-pilot. Then yes, he he, <laughs> he had to fly on the yeah. Lolita Express to Epstein Island. That's that's Reef's joke of the week. Um, I'm sure all our Christian brothers and sisters will just love that. Sorry, it's true. Yep. You don't have allies. You have vassal states that you hold hostage with threats of blackmail. If any country does not succumb to your whim. Whatever that may be, the file comes out and a thread of the videotapes appearing on the internet or the pictures appear in Z papers, follows, or maybe a gas pipeline critical to your country and continent gets blown to kingdom come. Make no mistakes about it. The United States of America bombs and sanctions its enemies and blackmails its friends. And I love that he includes a, chip, a clip from the Jimmy Dore show. No country on this planet joins a military alliance with the United States because they're afraid of what China and Russia will do if they don't. They join. They only join an alliance with America because they're afraid of what the United States will do if they don't. 100% true. And in the UK, where Julian Assange is being held in prison, serving no sentence for no crime, it is no different. In the UK, Julian Assange is being held in prison, awaiting extradition to the United States for publishing the truth about their war crimes. War crimes including the murder and subsequent cover-up of journalists. The UK's Crown Prosecution Service is refusing to release the full documentation of communications between their offices and the United States 
During the time, Julian Assange sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy. Note, Derek Keir Stormer was head of the Crown Prosecution Service during this time. And now he's, oh right, the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. The reason they will not release this information is to do so would have a chilling effect on extraditions worldwide. Yeah, because they lied and they're covering it up. When journalist Stefania Marizzi appealed this denial of freedom of information, the head of CPS denied, to access, denied access to it again, saying the chilling effect to extraditions worldwide is worse now than in 2017, but the reason given is redacted. Yeah. We covered that story, Great. too, about, about Stefania and the, and the FOIA thing and, and the, the demand, and they did release some info that yeah. further confirmed what we already knew. Two questions sprung to mind when Gordon saw that document. Firstly, how can any country call itself a democracy while being so secretive about a matter that is clearly of such importance to the general public and in their interest? And secondly, what else could this reason be? That to tell us what the U.S. said to the CPS would have a chilling effect on extraditions worldwide other than the United States of America blackmailing its closest ally? Or worse, threatening it with all-out war should they refuse to extradite a journalist whose only crime is that he published the truth. We've talked to Gordon. What are your thoughts so far on this one? I mean, he's spot on as always. Uh, you know. so, so, I mean, it's the Assange case is one of those things where to us, it's so cut and dry that like we're surprised anyone else has differing takes, you know? Yeah. Like so, you know, it's like he's an Australian citizen, shouldn't be tried here at all. There should be no extradition. Like, I mean, you just go through the spiel again, you know. For a crime he didn't commit. So, you know? Yeah, they they right. absolutely cooked it up. They keep reissuing the charges at the last minute so that they can't prepare a proper defense. Anyway. What he's saying is that if the United States can do this, if they can criminalize good journalism and reach into another country's borders and the, punish... Go ahead. What? The reason he's being <clears throat> detained is because of an uh, accusation made by someone who admitted he was lying. Siggy Thorson. Like, mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, I mean... Good on Gordon, though. <clears throat> yep. So, if the U.S. can do this... If they can criminalize good journalism and reach into any other country's orders to punish any person telling the truth about their crimes and criminal activity, except for Russia, they are not only destroying democracy worldwide, they're crossing a line that fascists cross. Yes, they are fascists. And that is doppelganger Stefania Marizzi, uh, Tori doppelganger Stefania Marizzi. And that is a, a clip from a Gordon uh, thing about this is the death of your right to know. He filmed this. Thank you, Deepa, and thanks to all. Deepa Driver. It's a, a great honor to be here, and I... And this was a whole speech that she gave. So this is in the Gordon article. For the UK to even consider extraditing a journalist to his certain torture and death at the hands of fascists because he did good journalism must mean what these fascists are threatening them with explosive information, with information so explosive that it could bring the entire nation to its knees. Maybe Prince Andrew and Epstein Island? Maybe somebody else. I don't know. Maybe. And if those regrettable Maybe. elements within the U.S. government that hate truth, liberty, and justice are doing this abroad, blackmailing their closest allies into torturing people for telling the truth, what do you think they're doing with their politicians and ruling elite at home? Remember President Bill Clinton flew hmm. on Epstein's plane 26 times. What do you think he was doing on those trips? And why has no journalist ever seriously questioned him about it. Well, that's because they, they won't let anyone get near him, close enough to him to ask that question. And if they do, they'll shepherd him away very quickly and then they will really be dis disappeared likely. Is the only way that a person gets to any position in power in the United States is if the intelligence community has leverage on them? Well, the answer is, of course, yes. Remember, these are people that will not under, under any circumstances release the JFK files, no matter how much they promise to do it when on the campaign trial trail um not mm -hmm. that the world doesn't know who killed him already of course these are the people that tried to get martin luther king to kill himself a lot of these people say uh, eventually completed that job themselves 
It's the same people that lied about the Gulf of Tonkin, incubator babies, and weapons of mass destruction in order to start wars that cost millions of lives and profited their buddies by billions of dollars. These are the same people whose explanation for why 9-11 wasn't stopped was that they were tracking all the hijackers who toppled three buildings in New York with two planes for years when they were in other countries, but stopped tracking them the minute the hijackers entered the United States and didn't tell anybody, let alone the FBI. Uh -huh. That's their official story. Do you think, knowing this track record for lying, that the United States should be the arbiters of truth worldwide? Do you think they can be trusted to tell the truth about anything at all? Yes. Forget World Trade Center, Tower 7. The regrettable, uh -huh. yeah, the regrettable elements within the U.S. government that hate truth, liberty, and justice have lied so much for so long that I believe Assange is right. When, oh, when all is exposed... 98% of Washington will fall. If, however, Julian Assange is extradited to fascists in America, it won't just mean his certain death. It'll be the death of your right to know the truth. It'll be the death of Western democracy and the death of UK sovereignty. It will be the death of freedom. Because any of those things exist uh, now. Well, <laughs> you know, like... Or until Julian they, Assange... They will free. definitely... Any... Right. None of us will be free. Um, Support our brother Gordon Dimack. Two more years, Julian. Two more years, Julian. Again, Gordon Dimack. But that's not the only Assange story I brought, and Reef loves it when I bring two Assange, two stories to to an article to a a segment. This one I caught in Counterpunch. Environmentalists owe an enormous debt to Julian Assange. Now, the reason why I picked this one specifically, I'm not a huge fan at this point of Counterpunch. They're okay. They're kind of shit Libby. Eve Ottenberg does great work. Not crazy about the St. Clairs. But we have used them quite a bit. But we also talk about environmental disasters. And since we really hadn't talked about anything regarding the environment in this week, and we're talking about labor, and we're talking about press freedom, and we're talking about censorship, I thought this was a good way to tie in environmentalism into our second anniversary show, considering that it, it kind of is a microcosm of everything that we've done over the last two years. So, mm -hmm. stating the obvious, but just another angle and another reason why this man should be freed, environmentalists owe an enormous debt to Julian Assange. Well, what What is Mitchell Julian? Cohen? That's better. What is Mitchell Cohen talking about? So, most environmentalists don't even know that they owe a debt of gratitude to WikiLeaks. It wasn't only secret recordings pertaining to war and crimes against humanity that WikiLeaks published, based on the heroic work of Chelsea Manning, who downloaded thousands of secret U.S. military files. A slew of U.S. cables yep. that Assange published revealed massive U.S. government attempts on behalf of Monsanto to coerce governments to allow foreign corporate land ownership, and with it, genetically engineered agriculture throughout the world, and to squelch opposition to GMOs, breaking down existing laws prohibiting the genetic engineering of agriculture. The cables revealed U.S. officials applying financial, diplomatic, and frequently military pressure on behalf of Monsanto and other biotech corporations. Hmm. The cables revealed... Uh, they were followed by revelations that the U.S., the World Bank, and IMF loans opened up to Ukraine to, mo to major corporate inroads, writes or Joyce Nelson, right, in The Ecologist and also in Counterpunch. Loan conditions are forcing the deeply indebted country to open up the GMO crops and lift the ban on private sector land ownership. U.S. corporations are jubilant at the gold mine that awaits them. The information... Which is why BlackRock is over there. Vanguard, that's right. And Ch uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. I know Jamie Dimon has been instrumental, I know, in the, in the reconstruction, quote-unquote, garbage. <laughs> The originalist asshole bank, J.P. Morgan Chase. Oof. That one. Well, it wasn't Chase then, but they just kind of inherited Chase thanks yes. to... It was, it was J.P. Morgan. Yeah, thanks to Tim Geithner, they but inherited he, Chase. Um, But free Julian Assange. I can't say that enough. Free fucking Julian Assange right now. Get this guy out of prison. We love him, and he's, he's a hero. Look at this. This is yet another reason why Julian's a hero. The information under the radar here in Whoa. the U.S., yeah, who? Julian. Julian. Julia. Um, 
reveal mm. stipulation. Yes, in in terms of the U.S.'s massive arms financing of Ukraine, going back for more than a decade. This was not just 2000, uh, 2022. This would this didn't start with Joe Biden decided to antagonize Vladimir Putin, and Putin decided to declare an independent zone for Donetsk and Luhansk and say, if you cross this line, I'm going to have to go into Ukraine. Stop shelling these motherfuckers. Nobody wants to talk about that. And by the way, Dennis, WTM, sirs, February 16th is when the war started, not February 24th. I'm going to acknowledge it. I'm going to be another voice saying February 16th was massive shelling starting in Donetsk, and they don't want to report on that. But Ukraine started shelling oh, and antagonizing. Yeah, it must be true. You know? And apparently Doug, Doug McGregor was talking about that. And and our friend WTM serves. He used to be in the Convo Couch Discord. Shout out to him. He's been trying to get everyone to acknowledge that the war did not start on February 24th, but rather was antagonized by Ukraine on the 16th of February. And it was all done tried to try to poke the bear and get Putin to declare a strategic military operation, which he then did on February 24th. Anyway. On yeah. April 28, 2020, President Volodymyr Zelensky, <laughs> Koki Smurf, signed a bill into law huh? authorizing the sale of farmland in Ukraine, lifting a moratorium that had been in place since 2001. This bill is part of a series of policy reforms upon which the IMF conditioned its $8 billion loan package. Huh, how about that? WikiLeaks revelations about agriculture became the basis for understanding the mechanisms imperialism uses. That's kind of important. The U.S. exerts its muscle on other countries to allow Monsanto et al. to take over huge tracts of land in Ukraine, bypassing direct purchase by foreign countries, by foreign companies. Foreign ownership of land had been prohibited by law in Ukraine, a sudden realization that so-called internet fact-checkers have been relying on to debunk news stories on the privatized dispersal of agricultural land there. But the debunkers mm -hmm. ignore the many mechanisms utilized by foreign corporations to gain ownership and control of the land and skirt the law. So we find massive U.S. corporate investments in Ukrainian companies controlling the kinds of seeds planted and how they are grown. What? Keep in mind, Russia has blocked out uh, Monsanto. What and GMOs the F and F? Are you kidding me? That 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 deserves a Jimmy right there. Thank you. Okay, or not. Welcome. In a I don't know. Takes a second. God. In a fuck you. Thank you. In jam. In a 2007 cable, <laughs> Mark Confidential, Craig Stapleton, then U.S. Ambassador, Ambassador to France, which we know thanks to Gordon Dimmock, hates our fucking guts anyway, advised the U.S. to prepare for economic war with countries unwilling to introduce Monsanto's GM corn seeds. <laughs> he called for retaliation to make clear that the current path has real costs to EU interests and could help strengthen European pro-biotech voices. In fact, the pro-biotech side in France has told us retaliation is the only way to begin to turn this issue in France. So, the U.S. diplomatic team then recommended that we calibrate a target retaliation list that causes some pain across the EU, since this is a collective responsibility, but also that focuses in part on the worst culprits. Holy shit. Thank you, Julian. The actual fuck? Yeah, so... These are coming from WikiLeaks cables. And if it weren't for WikiLeaks, we wouldn't know any of this. In another cable, this one from Macau in Hong Kong, a U.S. Department of Agriculture director, director requested $92,000 in U.S. public funds for media education kits, quote-unquote, to combat growing public resistance to genetically engineered foods. It portrays attempts to mandate the labeling of GMOs as a threat to U.S. interests and seeks to make it much more difficult for mandatory labeling advocates to prevail. Man, this food is killing us. It literally is. And But they're making billions of dollars in profit making it and producing it, and they're realizing that with the environmental disasters, there may not be a food supply to, you know, to really take care of the entire population, so they're trying to genetically engineer it and 
a lot of times it, it's poison. Um, or they, at least it has well, some little how, bit, a little bit in you. How much it affects? Uh, someone was saying that you know, wars are resource management generally. Yep. Right, and now the resource management is over the ability of the global south and access to water and arid land enough to like <laughs> you know water, do not water war. Like, They're gonna be fighting. <laughs> do not come. Right. Do not, do not come. So, um, um, yeah, that's the uh, old Kamala. Yes. Do not come. Yes. I'm going to come. Pokemon, go to the polls. Oh, God. What? Go away. Go away. Oh, no, her, oh, her, her, her name's going to come up here. The cables released by WikiLeaks revealed that the, that the officials in the Obama administration, particularly in Hillary Clinton's State Department intervened at Monsanto's request to undermine legislation that mm. might restrict sales of genetically engineered seeds. What a shock! Under Hillary Clinton, the U.S. State Department was gung so gung ho to promote GMOs that Mother Jones writer Tom Philpot called the agency she presided over the de facto global marketing arm of the ag biotech industry, complete with figures such as high ranking as high ranking as former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton mouthing industry talking points as if they were gospel. Why? Don't because be she, rude. Because she was a board member at Monsanto at the time, or just beforehand. She had massive stake and massive interest in promoting this and pushing this. Gross. The New York Daily mm -hmm. News reported that State Department officials under Hillary Clinton were actively using taxpayer money to promote Monsanto's controversial GMO seeds around the world. And check, okay, then there's a Mother Jones article about pushing it in Kenya in 2009. U.S. officials recommend biotech and agriculture DVDs be sent to every high school in Hong Kong. What's that, China? Cost? Well, Hong Kong technically then, uh, yeah, I guess it was. Uh, the cables revealed the joint strategic planning of Monsanto and the U.S. government. That is literally the definition of fucking fascism. The state and the corporation merged into one to come up with a series of talking points and videos on how to educate people. In one series, Monsanto concluded that northern Thailand would be an ideal location to cultivate genetically engineered corn for export to other countries due to the area's very low labor and infrastructure costs. Sure, they can exploit everybody. And in this cable released by WikiLeaks, one country, Peru, is mentioned as recipient, and the U.S. officials suggest that even with transportation expenses across two oceans included, it would nevertheless be more profitable to grow and ship GMO corn from northern Thailand than from neighboring Argentina or Brazil, since U.S. diplomatic efforts would be used to drive down the cost of production in northern Thailand, aka exploitation. The U.S. would press Thailand to drop its opposition to genetically mod modified cultivation, and the country would be rewarded with some type of an IMF loan or a World Bank loan, I'm sure, or some type of a forgiving of their loans so that they could continue to operate. That's the way that this works. The cables provide a fascinating and terrifying glimpse into the seemingly mundane mechanisms of global imperialism and consolidation of world agriculture on a very localized level. Thank you, Julian. WikiLeaks acquired and published a searchable database and unabridged text of the secret 2015 TPP, Transatlantic Trade and Invest uh, TTP, TIP, and TSI, TISA Trade Services Agreement. By publishing the secret text of the agreement, Assange exposed the U.S. government's pressure on other countries to purchase and plant Monsanto's patent, patented genetically engineered seeds, which required the, con, the concomitant purchase of Monsanto's patented pesticides in order for the crops to grow. So you're, it's literally like you're a drug, drug pusher who say you're selling, the, here's the virus, I'm going to sell you the virus, and then I'm going to sell you the cure. It's literally like the same thing. I'm going to sell you the seeds, and then I'm going to sell you the pesticides to make sure those seeds grow. But it wasn't Scott's. Yep. It was Monsanto. 
Scott's Miracle Grow is no better, but Monsanto literally is one of the most evil corporations on the face of the earth. And now they're also owned by Bayer AG, which is a German company. So, <laughs> treaties limited the ability of one country to legally challenge environmental de depredation in trade with another, making it abundantly clear that environmental issues could not be successfully addressed in piecemeal fashion, but must be seen as integrated political, technological, economic, and scientifically packaged warfare. To succeed, movements would be compelled not only to examine the dangers of each pesticide du jour, but the underlying mechanisms by which corporations such as Monsanto, Bayer, Dow, DuPont, Syngenta, I never even heard of that one, Novartis, BASF, and other pesticide and pharmaceutical manufacturers have come to determine the government policies overall, right? They do as well as those of global regulatory agencies, which in turn allow them to get away with masking the truth um, about an outright lying about their danger. Yeah, what a surprise. So <laughs> while socialist and ecology activists have always exposed the collaboration between government and corporate expansion, the details revealed by WikiLeaks published documents are nothing short of astounding. They reveal the need for ecological movements to develop far more radical strategies for dealing with the immense destruction by capitalism in practice, and not just in theory or in piecemeal fashion. For this largely unknown contribution by Julian Assange, ecological activists, along with anti-war radicals motivated by Assange's publishing of the now inf infamous collateral murder video, obtained by Chelsea Manning, owe Assange a debt of gratitude that can, of course, never be fully repaid. Getting him out of jail would be a huge debt to be repaid. But yes, we can never repay the debt. We can never restore and just him to, his, to himself, let alone the praise that he's well-deserving for exposing this kind of corruption and dedicating himself. And at this point, sacrificing himself for this kind of corruption. Today, Julian Assange is locked away in a prison in Brit Britain and is fighting for his life. That's Belmarsh. The U.S. government seeks to bring this Australian citizen to the United States for a show trial and then lock him up forever if they don't assassinate him en route, as the CIA and U.S. State Department had already discussed. Well, at least that's according to Michael Isakoff, which I don't know if I buy that whole story at all, but it's quite possible Pompeo put it in front of Trump and other people have confirmed it, so who knows. But the sacrifices that Julian Assange has made are profound and his contribution to ecological as well as anti-war movements is enormous. It is incumbent on all to demand an end to his incarceration and torment by the U.S. and British governments. And yet, despite worldwide exposure of glyophosphate's dangers and its designation as a probable carcinogen, only a handful of governments throughout the world have joined with environmental activists and health professionals in banning Monsanto's Roundup. We need to turn up the volume. Free Julian Assange now. No to GMOs and the Planet Destroyers. And I also want to give a shout out to um, what's what's her name? Um, it's it's Villa Four Assembly, the number four Villa Four Assembly. I think it, it's Ma Mary Villa. Um, she she's great. Um, she's been doing the Stop Monsanto campaign for a while. Stop Bayer Monsanto, and. God, this is so well sourced. There's a lot of stuff. Michael Cohen, he's in coordinator of the No Spray Coalition in New York City. And amazingly enough, mm. he's got to be a boomer because he has a MindSpring email address. Do you know how old MindSpring is? Do you even know what MindSpring is? Um, it was a dial-up. Like Netscape. Uh, basically, it was a dial-up ISP in the early '90s that then yeah, became. I think I, I, think I remember. They then became Earthlink, like in 1999. Yeah, like I in remember, like, I remember Earthlink. Right, but this, now you're talking where I'm at. These fuckers predate Earthlink, and his email address is still around. Yeah. Mitchell Cohen, dude, I love you. I had a I had a MindSpring email address a long, 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 long time ago. So, Julian. All right, that was a little long. I know. Sorry. Julian. But that's a good one. And again, free Julian Assange. We love you, Julian Assange. Get him out. Um, there are some uh, 
There's some big stuff happening, and you know we know that there's talk of potentially a deal happening. Elbow is now going to be coming to uh, that's uh, Albanese, the Prime Minister of Australia, will be coming mm-hmm. to the United States at the end of October. Misty's talking about getting some kind of an action or some kind of an organization thing together. 